In this video, I'm going to go over just some basic stretches that we do. We do them in classes quite often. They're going to help you get your splits. So you can watch this video as many times as you want. It's just a good stretching routine that's going to help you get a lot more flexible. So let's go ahead and we're going to start off uh, with our quads. So remember, grab this. I'm going to put 30 seconds for each side. So you can hold it down like this if you feel tight already. If you don't feel tight yet, go ahead and kick your knee back just a little bit. Let your foot come out as you do this. Push your hips forward and bring it back. So bring your foot back in towards your glutes. Again, you can do this, uh, you can do this holding onto a wall. You don't have to do it with balance. You can practice your balance when you do this. That's always a good thing, but you don't have to. Right now, we're just focusing on the stretch. So we're going to go ahead and go on to our other side. Same thing. If it's too easy, push your hip forward and bring that foot, your heel, in towards your glutes. Like I said, we do, we do a lot of these stretches in the classes, but I want you to have something that you can just practice if you're maybe not up for doing the whole class, but you just want a nice little stretching routine that's going to help you uh, with your Taekwondo and get your kicks up as high as you can. Now, we're going to go into our single leg hamstrings. Just like this, so I'm going to sit down on this. You can put your heel down if you want, or you can stay on the ball of your foot. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm go ahead and start. I always try to reach for my toes with my opposite hand. If you don't quite have that, then just try to get down as much as you can. Like I've said, you can grab your pants and help pull it in. You can use the finger walking method to help get your chest closer to your leg. We just want to focus on that nice hamstring stretch that should be right here in the bottom of the leg, not quite on the inside just yet. We're gonna go ahead and switch. Same thing, reach for it with your chest. If it's a little bit too easy where it is, push your foot forward a little bit more and reach for it again. Try to touch your head down. Remember as we're doing this, always be breathing. And if you feel something that's really tight, use your mind and focus on that muscle and tell it to relax. You have control over your body. Whether you think of it or not, you're going to have that control. So next we're going to go back to the first side just like we did. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this hand underneath my leg and I'm going to use my elbow or my hand or whatever and I'm pushing this back. So let's go ahead and start this. I'm pushing it back, and you're going to feel this one on the bottom inner portion. So compared to before where I was right here at the bottom, you should feel this one a little bit more on the inside portion of the leg. Go ahead, and you can use both of your elbows. And it's kind of like doing the splits almost already. Again, make sure you breathe. Tell your muscles to relax. And let's switch sides. Same thing. So I find the best time to do stretches are obviously after you've just warmed up is a really good time to do stretches. Or uh, in the evening, I like to take a shower before I go to sleep. So after my shower, my body's kind of warmed up because you know most people use hot water when they take a shower. So your body gets warmed up, your muscles are more relaxed, and that's a good time to stretch too is right before bed. It helps me sleep too if I have stretch just uh, before bed. If I don't, I sometimes feel my muscles start to tighten up. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to our socket stretch. So we sit up just like this. Remember, we're focusing on pushing that straight down. I want my hip bone pointed down. My bottom or my foot is on uh, the ground. I don't have it just like this. Not quite yet. I'm focusing my weight here. If I have it really good, I can put my hand on my hip to push down, my other hand on my knee to lean back some. That'll help you get even more stretch if you already feel flexible. Uh, it'll help you push it just a little bit farther. And we're gonna go ahead and switch. Same thing on the other side. Push that back leg down. If you're not quite warmed up, then I recommend doing a little bit of bounces with all your stretches. The bounces, like I said, it's Better if you haven't quite warmed up yet. It's towards the beginning of your stretching. I always find that the bounce helps quite a bit to help uh, relax my muscles.
Now from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate our back foot so that our heel is up. We basically just changed what part of the muscle is gonna be stretched. So before we had it right here on the inside of the groin. Now we have it right here, right where the um, leg connects into the hip. It's gonna be our hip flexor muscles right there and that's what we're working on. So let's start that time. And we can do this one the same way. If we have, if we feel that we're already pretty flexible, we can put one hand on our knee, other hand on our hip, and we can lean back. And that's gonna force a little bit more stretch. If you don't quite have that yet, if you're not as flexible, maybe you can still feel a nice stretch just like this. You, you can put your other hand down so you don't um, feel like you're falling over. It's an easy way to keep your balance. But once you do get really flexible, you're gonna have to lean back a little bit to get more of that stretch. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we went from the socket stretch and we rotated our back foot. Let's go ahead and start the timer. They like said, if you need to put your hand down, you can use that to help keep your balance. In your head though, mentally, I want you pushing with your hip bone down to the ground. My knees, my back uh, knee stays kind of straight. It can bend a little bit, but I don't want it bending so much that it does this, where it's on the ground, because then I'm not getting that stretch that I want. So I do want my knee off the ground and I'm pushing my hips down towards the ground with this. Next stretch we're gonna do is we're going to sit down, just like this. We're gonna do our hurdler stretch. So bring one leg behind, so it was in front, bring it behind, and now I want you to raise your body up and push your heel of the front leg and your knee of the back leg apart. So you're almost doing the splits here, and then I want you to set down on top of it. First one we're gonna do when we're here is we're gonna put our head towards our front leg. So you can use your hands to reach for it. Again, I've gone over the methods quite a few times. You can pull uh, on the leg, finger walk, have your reach as much as you can. If you feel it's really tight, you can tap on it a little bit, try to get it to loosen up. The tapping on it mostly just kind of helps your mind kind of focus and isolate that muscle. And then like I was saying earlier, your mind can tell your muscles to relax. And that's what I want you to do. You have to be focused on what you're doing with this. So the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna go towards the center, just like this. Again, finger walk as much as you can. Drop your elbows down. You should be feeling it a little bit more on the inside. It's kind of like a twisting type stretch. So compared to on the bottom, which we're here, it's a little bit more on the inside with this one. Make sure to breathe, never hold your breath. The next one we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going over that back leg. So we're gonna turn just like this. And we're looking over this back leg. We're twisting with this. We want that twisting motion. So you should be able to feel this one right here on the top of your bent leg. And you might still Feel a little bit on your hamstrings, um, depending on how, how far apart you are with your uh, stretch. You might find if I bring this knee in, or bring my foot in closer to my glutes, it changes the stretch just a little bit. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So put that leg in front, grab this one, put it into the back, raise up, push it out, and sit down onto it. Reach towards the toes. So remember the next one, we're gonna be going right here towards the center. And I do want you to finger walk when you go into that one. Ready, and go for it. Finger walk as much as you can forward, and then relax into a nice stretch position. You should always feel a little bit of stretch. If you don't feel any stretch, then you're not pushing yourself and you're not gonna gain anything from this. Make sure you breathe. Focus on the muscles that are tensing up and tell them to relax. And now we're gonna go 
over just like this. When I do this one, I like to think of this as, this is kind of like a kicking position to me. So this would be my base leg if this was my kicking position. And I'm holding it right here and say I can kick this leg out. Boom. This is my kicking leg. So that's kind of the way I like to think of this one, is it does help you when you're actually doing your kicks. Like you can clearly see if I was standing up and that was my base leg, this would be my kicking leg. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our splits. So we're going to start just like this with our toes facing front. Hold it. We're doing all of these for 30 seconds. So if you're doing this whole uh, stretching routine with me, make sure after this that you drink quite a bit of water, your muscles are going to tighten up again. So tomorrow you're probably going to feel a little bit sore just from doing these. So tomorrow what I want you to do is I want you to do a light stretch. Don't do a deep stretch like we are doing right now. Do a lighter stretch. Okay, let's go ahead and pick a side. So I'm going over my right side. I'm going to put my right hand over my right foot. So now my right toes are facing up, my back toes are facing out. But like I was saying, we want to uh, we want to do a light stretch in between heavy stretches. So say I want to do three or four heavy stretch days a week. The other days I can't skip and not do any stretches. I have to do light stretches. So maybe do this, but only do it for like 10 seconds, kind of bounce around into it. Don't have these static holds like we're doing right now. This is The static holds are what's really going to help you get the stretch. But the bouncing in between is kind of muscle recovery. So you do need that on the other day. So let's go ahead and switch to the other side. But if you only do one of these a week, it's probably not going to help you as much as it could help you. So we want to constantly stretch. Every day we're stretching, but I want you to pick, you know, every other day will be your heavy stretch days. And the other days in between are going to be your light stretch days. So just go easy on those. few more seconds on this side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up a little bit and I'm going to point my knee down and now my back leg, the top of my foot is on the ground compared to earlier when we did this. Now we're doing this. So this is going to change the stretch. It's a completely different stretch now. So I don't actually do this one as often as I should. I tend to do the other three uh, splits quite, quite a bit more. But this one is still a good stretch and it is a lot more on your hamstrings than you would, than you would expect. So I forgot to start the timer on that one. That means we're going to have a little bit more stretch with this one. But that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Make sure you're not pushing yourself so much to the point that it's being excruciating pain. I've seen some people where they're screaming out in pain from doing the splits. That's, that's not going to help you. You're much more likely to pull a muscle than to actually help get that stretch in and be more flexible. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side now. So same thing. This one's here and push that other leg out. So this one, my back foot, the top of my foot is on the ground. To get a little bit of dynamic movement in there, you can go from side to side. Again, you don't have to do that. Maybe on your light stretch days, you'll do this and you'll do that quick and easy, light stretch side to side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our splits, our front splits, and we're going to sit down slowly. So slowly, slowly sit down. If you sit down fast, your feet are going to just come right in together. Your muscles are going to pull them. So what I want you to do first is I want you to just reach forward just like this. If you can put your chest on the ground, go ahead and do that. If you can't quite do that, don't worry about it yet. Try to put your arms out in front of you like this though. That way gravity's kind of pulling you down 
If you're content with doing it with your elbows here, notice the gravity's pulling right into my elbows and it's not forcing my chest down to the ground. So I'm not gonna get as good of a stretch as I would if my arms are out here and I have that gravity pulling me down into it. So now we're gonna pick a side and with our opposite hand. So with my left hand, I'm gonna reach for my right toes, just like this. So I'm just reaching right ac across. You can touch your head to your leg. Go ahead and do that. If not, do what you can. Switch sides, same thing. You'll probably notice that when doing this, you're gonna have a good side and a bad side. It's probably gonna be, um, your better side will be your left side, which kind of doesn't make sense to most people when you first think about it, but it's because you're kicking with your right leg, so your left side, tends to get a little bit more hamstring stretch so your right leg gets kicked up higher because most people do, whether they realize it or not, they tend to kick a lot more with their dominant leg. Makes sense, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this other side and instead of reaching across where I just turn my trunk, I'm going to, with this hand, swim under and I'm gonna reach over just like this. So I should feel a nice stretch up in here too. And begin. So this other arm is in front. Don't put it behind you, put it in front of you. Reach over your body. Hopefully you feel the tightening, tightening up of your muscles and then the relaxation of your muscles. Same thing, other side. Try to get your head in that hole right here. Don't go right here. All the way in. Try to touch those toes. Try to focus on your hamstrings of the side you're on right in here, relaxing. Like I said, you also get this nice stretch right up here in your side. Now we're gonna go to the middle one more time. So this stretch that we've been doing, the one where we're sitting down in the splits, is the reason why I can do the splits. This one is one of the most beneficial ones for me. When I was uh, younger and I was first coming up in Taekwondo, I would sit and I would do homework you know, for school in this position, like this. I would do homework. Or I'd watch TV or maybe eat a bowl of cereal. I would just sit down on the carpet and I would do whatever I was doing just in this stretch. And I would hold this for quite a long time. We're going over the 30 seconds for this one, but I would hold this for quite a long time. And then every now and then when I felt, hey, my muscles are relaxed, I'm not getting that stretch that I was getting before, I would slide up just a little bit more and I'd come back down. And I, that progression over time is what really enabled me to be able to do the splits. Like I said, mostly with this one, because I could sit here, it wasn't hard like when I was doing the splits normally. Okay, go ahead and bring your legs in together. We're gonna go to the butterfly. You might have to pull your legs in at this point. But doing the splits with um, gravity is going to be a lot more difficult and more strenuous on your body. You're, it's not as comfortable as if you're able to sit down like that and just lean forward. You control when the um, the feeling of the stretch comes on, comes off. You can adjust accordingly without that gravity, having that constant pull on your muscles. So it kind of gives you the ability to relax them uh, on your own and still get a nice stretch. So I like to do the butterfly every time after I do this. And I just, I just do it with you know, the flapping of the wings, basically. It's gonna help those uh, muscles warm up again because you just had a nice stretch form. So if you don't do any dynamic movement right after that, it's gonna be kind of painful. So. I usually do this one and then we're gonna hop up and we're gonna do our hip twists because those are usually the ones I like to do after a nice stretch of the uh, hip flexor muscles. I feel like those ones are the most beneficial. So now, hands on your hips and turn. You probably feel it's pretty tight right now. 
which is good. That's kind of what we want. Like I said, you want to do these more before bed. You never want to do a uh, really tough stretching routine right before you're going to work out, right before you're going to do a class, because then your muscles are going to be it, they're going to be sore. Like it, it comes on quickly, you'll be sore. You're not going to be as good as you would have been. So remember, before a uh, class, we want to have a light stretch where we do hit it and we still make the muscles stretch out, but we don't want a deep, heavy stretch. That's saved for either after class when your muscles are still warmed up, or like I said, after a shower in the evening before you go to sleep. So that's just a few of the stretches that. I find they really help for my splits. I hope they help you out with yours. And you can do this class as many times as you want to just be able to get a little bit more flexible.